So uh, how did you actually come up with this idea? Because it is definitely not like anything else on TV right now. That's really great to hear because that was actually the intention too. Um, well, actually, it wasn't the intent. I didn't go, you know what, I want to make something that's not like anything else. It actually started from a very truthful uh, place. And it, it's there's a lot of my own life experience wrapped up in in all of the characters in this show. Um, you know, I'm a single parent. I've had to navigate certain things that, that the characters in the show have to navigate. Um, the I was just kind of very fortunate to be at one particular situation in 2019 where there was a coincidence which led to the genre element of this show revealing itself. Um, and once the genre element sort of revealed itself, I suddenly had an avenue to explore all of these themes and emotions and uh, and it made it a fun way of actually being able to explore that and deliver that to the audience. So. Um, so yeah, I, 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 like I said, I didn't go, what can I do that we haven't seen before? The idea just revealed itself to me. And I just kept following the sort of the, the truthful, uh, emotion behind that idea and the genre element, I think is the thing that kind of made it just pushed it up into that extra level, um, which all of a sudden made it really fun to make as well, too. You, the series is six episodes. Yes. Um, and uh, I've seen all six. And my question for you is, how did you decide on that number? Uh, was it ever, did you ever envision it as less or more than that? Uh, yeah, so look, I spent, I mean, I spent a good sort of six months outlining the series and and no, six six felt like it was the natural number for to, to tell the story in the way that I have. Um, there was at one point there was, um, there was some, outside pressure um of maybe adding another couple of episodes to it and i would say that's this actually was before we'd sold sold the show as well too before we found our home at peacock peacock thankfully were like on board from the beginning of like no this is the right amount of episodes for this story you know there's a obviously the episodes work in a certain way the first two episodes you're kind of getting up to speed the way the audience is getting up to speed with some of the characters in terms of how they're getting up to speed with the with the story and then after that it just kind of rockets to the end um i'm i'm very sick of seeing shows where you know i i, I seem to sort of say every time i watch kind of things going this is like two or three episodes longer than it needs to be or you kind of get a couple of episodes in or you get four episodes in and you go finally the show is starting so i didn't want to be one of those shows i wanted it to actually just the story dictated how many episodes it should be so that's how we ended up with six when you actually got to peacock and they bought the show how much were they asking you hey uh, I'm glad this is going to be six episodes, but we want to know you have like a five year plan or we want to know you have more to this. Yeah. Um, when we were pitching the show, um, there is for me, there's an arc of the story which gets told over subsequent seasons that, that this series where this series ends. Um, for me, it's a perfect ending of like you being able to kind of feel like the characters are in a very different place at the end of this series than they are at the beginning. And they wouldn't have reached that point had they not have kind of come together in the quite extreme way that they do. But the same way that this series is about how do you how do you navigate a new relationship when you have baggage? How do you bring a single child? Uh, how do you is you're a single parent? How do you bring a child into a new relationship as well? Uh, there's other stages of a relationship uh, that subsequent series can deal with effectively. Obviously, I mean, it's, I can't, you know, we don't want to give anything away, but they're a very, very different unit at the end of this show than they are at the beginning. Subsequent seasons would kind of go into exploring what that would mean. Uh, the opening credits of this series are interesting and they get more interesting as the series goes on. Yeah. Um, can you sort of talk about designing those? Yeah, so that's a company called Antibody um, uh, and a, a, a director called Patrick Clare who, who did 
uh, True Romance, sorry, True Detective, The Crown, uh, Westworld, on sort of top of other things. He's Australian. I'm based in Australia. He's based here as well too. I just love his work. And um, I gave him a pitch of what I wanted the opening titles to be. I mean, you've said it exactly. You kind of, you, you should be questioning what they are and then, in episode three, when everything is finally on the table, you go, oh, okay, that's what that's what we've been watching all this time. It was trying to take something that was quite grotesque and make it beautiful by showing it in a very kind of close up way. Also that Queens of the Stone Age track kind of really articulates that same sort of feeling as well that, you know, and we play different parts of the song as the series progresses. But what I love about the opening titles is in the last episode, and this was Patrick's idea, um, you it ends on something very different the like the last title the last image that we have on the show is something very different to, to how we started it which is also what happens to the characters yeah I, I like when credits change a little bit where you actually have to pay attention yeah completely and not just you know, again not letting the audience do that skip intro thing it's like no you fucking credits are an opportunity to actually take you into the world of the show um so yes. it was fun trying to just like yeah keep people interested and engaged and discovering it as the characters do uh some a spoiler question or two yep. um yep. so yep. how did you actually come up with designing uh the wolf because you eventually it gets revealed yep. and um i'm just curious how you designed so our team that did that is a company called odd studio which are based here in australia they're i mean i think that you know they are world class they won the oscar for fury road um and they also did uh, design the zombies for me in my last movie, Little Monsters. I went to them and basically said, look, just as I did with Little Monsters, it was like, just do, I want them to design and do the werewolf that they've always wanted to do. They'd never done a, they'd done a, a two-legged werewolf before, but they hadn't done a four-legged werewolf. And so they were really excited being able to uh, do that. The only the only things that I the only conditions that I gave them is that it had to be a feminine werewolf. And knowing that it was Isla in the show too, um, uh, everyone like had a lot of fun designing a red red headed werewolf as well. Um, so they built in this some really beautiful feminine qualities uh, into the design of the wolf. And that was the point too, which is like when we do finally see her, um, it's actually about making her beautiful as, as as much as she is scary she is actually beautiful as well too so um look i'm i'm i like to think i'm smart enough that when you employ people like odd or when you work collaborate with people like odd it's not up to me to kind of like set like a whole bunch of design i want it to look exactly like this you just let them run free and what they delivered back to us was far better than i could have ever imagined did you get any pressure from anyone to introduce the wolf sooner than the last episode of the season? Look, I was always really upfront from the beginning that we had to withhold it for as long as possible because um, I think that it's a lot better leaving it up to your imagination. But then even in the last episode where we do show her, it was also the se that sequence, which is quite a sort of prolonged sequence, it was also about withholding her for as long as possible in that sequence too to go that's why that last sequence is you know it's like a shark attack on land so you don't actually see her you hear her you feel her presence but you don't actually see her but also it was about showing gary in episode two seeing seeing his expression as he's watching what he's he's watching and us being able to hear it um yeah no no it was like it was always from the get-go is like i wanted the audience to actually forget in a way too that they're actually watching a werewolf show and so that when the show when the wolf shows up in the last episode i wanted them to be oh fuck, we're gonna have to see it now and now i don't want to see it i want to see it when i when i know that this is what the show's about i want to see it but i wanted you to forget and then not want to see it when she finally did show up uh assuming that the show uh is a hit and you get to make a season two um had you have you already thought about do i about how much the wolf might now be incorporated more now that you've revealed it? Or is it one, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yes. I mean, I don't want to say too much. I mean, I am like, like thinking and working on, on, you know, ideas for subsequent seasons, but the, the it's, it's not going to be this, the, the idea is it won't be the same thing where now that we have shown the wolf, we can actually, I feel like, show her uh like a lot a lot sooner 
Um, and that's also the fun now and kind of just constantly, the big part of this first series is about subverting the audience's expectations about what they're going to watch. And I know subsequent seasons, that's also going to be the fun in, yeah, not just doing the same thing over, over and over again. I got to stop there. I'm just going to say congrats. I hope it's a huge hit. Thank you Thanks, for giving man. me your time. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cool. Have a great day. You too.